And ladies and gentlemen, may I now introduce to you Mr. Debashish Banerjee, Managing Director, CESC Limited, Kolkata. Uh, as Managing Director, Distribution of CESC, Mr. Banerjee has ushered in a transformation journey to lift CSC to the next level and prepare it for facing any competition by turning it into an agile, customer-centric, and cost-effective digital utility. In pursuit of his passion to transform power distribution business into a digital utility, he effectively deploys latest cutting-edge technologies for radical change. In his last stint as CEO of Reliance Energy, he contributed to improving operational efficiency significantly through business processes, re-engineering, and automation while optimizing costs, thus enhancing bottom line and customer delight. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the Managing Director, CSC Limited, Kolkata, Mr. Debashish Banerjee. Uh, a very good morning to respected Mr. Bhalla, the uh, respectable dignitaries on the dais and an august audience. Uh, it's always uh, good to be here in this forum of Smart Grid. Uh, and I feel I am in the right sector uh, because electricity is uh, being the driving force of our GDP growth of India. Today, as uh, uh, India, we heard, has become the fourth, uh, fifth largest economy and is going to overtake the other global economies. We are poised to be a seven trillion dollar economy, let's say by 2030. And with this, what we understand that with the help of the electrification scheme, which has happened all over India, including Saubhagya, electricity has reached the common man there. There will be a lot of development in the entire A, S, B and C cities and a lot of urbanization will happen in terms of influx of people uh, to the urban cities. So about 20 crores of people are supposed to come into the cities in the next 15 years. So today where we are at an India level of in 2017 having a per capita consumption of 1200 units per year, it's going to be slated to go up to 4,500 units per year in the year 2040. Now, wherever we look on, for, uh, it is electricity. For example, today, if our entire uh, consumption of India is in the level of 1,200 billion units or more, it's understood that with the help, uh, not with the help, with the climate change coming up, the ACs itself will be guzzling about 1,300 billion units by the year 2050. Maybe another next, by 2030, 600 billion units of AC load would come in. Obviously, they would be star rated ACs and other ACs. Now, you let's go to the other uh, uh, source of uh, uh, mobility, the transportation. Today, we all know that uh, we are going in through a phase of electric mobility not only the metros which is added being added to the cities which will obviously need electricity to uh, you know uh, to run the two wheelers the three wheelers and the four wheelers are priming that change and we in our own uh, ways the utilities are putting up electric vehicle charging stations to ensure that when you go out with a two wheeler three wheeler or four wheeler you don't have the fear that you would not be able to charge a uh, uh, a vehicle when you're on the move. So we as a utility are also have embarked in putting up uh, electric vehicle charging stations in the city of Calcutta under the uh, flyovers at busy junctions and we are working with the uh, corporation there. In our own way we are introduced electric uh, four wheelers and two wheelers in our fleet. So if we all in our own way do some good things together I think that will add up to a big transformational change. Now we come to the uh, uh, cooking. I think uh, the one more um, aspect we understand that uh, electricity since is the, the cleanest mode of use and as appliance, the safest mode and uh, very economical. The cooking itself will have go on a radical change in terms of uh, uh, being a safe uh, you know, medium electricity and it will generate about 70 billion units in, by 2030. 
So I think electricity is going to be a growth uh, 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 or a prime mover in the development of the economy of India. Now, going forward, we understand that there is a challenge for the utilities also, because I'm from the utility perspective, I'm talking from the utility perspective. Today, the thermal generation, which caters to our base load, is about 55% in India, and about 21% is our renewables, and more and more renewables are kicking in. Well, utilities face a challenge. The challenge is our base load would be around 67% our peak load. So the challenge which we face is, what is the ROI on my capex? We put a capex of 100% to ensure that for a couple of hours during the whole year, we, none of our consumers should suffer any outage. But our base load is, let's say, 70% or 67% of the peak load. So the job of the utility is to understand how to minimize the gap between the peak and the base load. Because if we do that, we not only bring a good ROI on the capex, we also ensure that the consumers are satisfied throughout the year. And for that, obviously, we would have smart meters or smart devices, you know, monitoring the entire thing. Now, coming to that part, technology and data. See, today, technology and data are sweeping us. Disruption is the new normal. If we like it or not, for our the most critical part, our income tax declaration, we have to do it online. We have to apply for a passport online. You go out, want to call a taxi, or sitting in the room, you have to do it online. So we, as we call this Uberization or Zomatization or whatever it is, technology and is going to sweep it. And we as utilities in the power sector obviously need to embrace it. And yes, in terms of smart, we have already embraced it. For example, when we talk of Internet of Things, it may seem a big word, but it's basically a sensor. So when you have, when we have a communicable fault passage indicator installed, that's actually communicating data on real time. When we have installed smart meters in thousands in Calcutta and in the distribution franchise of Kota, where we have done about over 60,000 smart meters, they all, actually are giving data. They are giving data of a transformer, the current, the voltage, and in some places we also are getting the data of the humidity levels, of the temperature, of the vibrations, etc. So they are communicating data. The communicable relays are communicating data. So this is what? This is Internet of Things, IoT. And do we, we get it on the net? Internet is called IoT. Now look at the other side of that. How do, get, how do we understand that my consumers are, will not suffer? How do we understand that their experience will be better? My network will be fine. We have, in our own way, adopted uh, data analytics. You call it big data analytics, you call it AI. We have ensured that we go from the preventive maintenance to a predictive maintenance. So successfully, we have, in our in-house, done an AI project on HT fault prediction. Because if I can predict my fault, I can reduce my fault, I can reduce my customer outage, I can do just-in-time CapEx. What we have done is, we have seen the data of the last four years, we have understood, we have used tools which we all have heard, like Python for extracting, we used Weka for uh, modeling, so we are as a an utility and we have predicted seven out of eight falls successfully. You know, that's what we are trying to do. We are not only thinking, you know, talking big terms. We are trying to transform our organization into an end-to-end -end digital organization. We are working on a model to understand that for all our data of so much years of CapEx which we have given, which adds on to the customer's fixed cost, which adds on to uh, the network cost, you know, what is the best ROI we get? How do we do, do a better analytics in terms of losses, though our losses, distribution losses per se, would be in the range of 8% or something like that. So, point here is, we understand, sometimes we say, you know, what will happen? The technology, the AI, the ML, the machine learning, the deep learning will take jobs. 
I don't think so. They won't take jobs. You know, technology and data is the how part. Human, us, is the why part. Because as more and more mundane jobs get automated, the humans move up the value chain to be more creative, to be more intuitive, to be more uh, uh, innovative. And hence, there is an inherent need to change the mindset of our own people so that we go to the next level and we use you know, all this technology and data to ensure that we give a very good experience to the customer, we give a very good uh, value to our uh, uh, company, and this is what I think is going to be the future. And we all should actually take a part into it and should see that how we can marry it. Will they, with this, obviously the challenges would be there. We understand that there is a challenge of renewables eating out into our uh, segment. That means people will have renewable energies kicking in, into it and they would have uh, uh, reduced my uh, revenue. Obviously, we would think of going in for a gross metering instead of net metering, so my revenue is protected. The consumers actually get a benefit of the lower uh, peak power or the solar power. Then there would be other instances of um, uh, open access, but we all should understand and ensure that we, as a utility, have the authority, not have the responsibility of not just watching what my consumers are doing. As I told you, the ACs, the cooking, the EVs and all that, when we can prime the consumption. Once we prime the consumption and we prime a safe, clean and economic media of consumption, we are doing that right. And by doing it, we will not only take our city, but we will take our country to the next level. And uh, uh, by this, we would serve the entire community and to be in a cleaner and a greener future. And I think that's what the intelligence would help us to do it. With that, I'll end my speech and thank you very much for the patient listening.